Hey, thank you so very much for joining us once again. And uh, I hope and pray that you're enjoying your summer. And I can't believe it's like halfway through the summer, but we got a lot more to go. Hey, um, we're still in this series, like, what do I believe even when I'm not sure what do I believe? An invitation to know and love God well. Well, I don't have a deep doctrinal teaching for you today. We're taking a little break from that again this week. But I just have some things on my heart that I want to share with you out of Isaiah chapter 43. Now, before I get there, the bottom line about what do I believe, even when I'm not sure what to believe, really comes from this. What do I believe about God's love when I'm not where I should be and I know I'm not experiencing the potential or all the promises of God? What do I still believe about God? That's what today's message is all about, to see obstacles as opportunities. Opportunities. Now, before we get going, I just want to share a scripture that's been uh, just speaking to my heart, and I hope it speaks to your heart. It's out of uh, Psalm 91. In Psalm 91, verse 14, the Lord says, you know, I just love when the Bible communicates, the Lord says, and here it is, I will rescue those who love me. Yeah, I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Now notice in this text here that God doesn't say he's going to remove trouble from us. He's going to be with us in the midst of trouble. He's going to be with us in the midst of what we're going through. He still has a plan, but it's his love that makes a difference, and it's our love to him that really makes a huge difference. So who am I going to love, and what am I going to love, even when I'm not experiencing all the promises of God? So here we go. Now we're going to go to Isaiah 43. Now, what's happening here is God's people were giving him lip service, but their hearts were far from God. They were kind of like going through the motions, but they weren't experiencing everything that God had for them. As a matter of fact, their devotion was really, really far from God. And so in, in, in the midst of this time, the prophet Isaiah, now Isaiah in the Old Testament is considered one of the major prophets. There's major prophets and minor prophets. Basically, this is how I look at them. When you have a lot, a lot, a lot of chapters, you're a major prophet. When you only have a few chapters, you're a minor prophet. And so Isaiah, he was a major, major, major prophet. But don't worry, today's message, I'm going to be a minor preacher. It's not going to go too long. So here we go. And so what was going on is, is he was speaking to God's people who about a time to come when they were going to have problems and they were going to be taken away from their land and taken to a place of captivity. But he didn't just say you're going to be taken away. He also speaks to the end result, which they're going to be released from captivity. Now, in Hebrews, it talks about uh, prophets who were sawn in two. Many theologians and historians of the Bible say that, that Isaiah was one of the ones cut in half. That's right, he gave his life for the very, for, for God and for what he was speaking prophetically. So when we are not experiencing the fullness of God, we run the risk of being taken into a place of confusion, chaos. That's what Babylon represents, All the, a worldly system, chaos and confusion. So this is, what, this is where it is. So let's pick it up, Isaiah chapter 43. This is what... The Lord says in verse 14, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Number one, whenever we feel far away from God, and I'm not sure what I believe, what we need to go back to is what does the Lord say? What does He communicate to us? I love just even some of the things here. First of all, Lord, that's the one in charge. And then Redeemer, God is into redemption. Yeah, the creator of all, the Holy One of Israel here. So Redeemer, I don't know about you, but I am so thankful for the God of the second chance. I'm so God takes bruised, beaten, uh, captive, and he releases them. He redeems them. He restores. That's what kind of God we have. We have, we have a God of redemption. And so when God says, 
Even when we're not doing well, God sees beyond where we are and sees redemption for us. And that's what he sees for you. And that's what he sees for me here. See, we want information at times. I want to know information, but what God wants is revelation. We need to have a the Lord says in our life. And that's what he wants for you and for me. Not just more information, but revelation. This is what the Lord says here. So we go on. For your sakes, I send, my, uh, send an army against Babylon, forcing the Babylonians to flee in those ships they are so proud of. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One, Israel's creator and king. Again, so many, so many titles for God that are so important. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all the chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned, their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candlewick. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. This is God. This is what God said. Forget about it. Forget about the past. Behold what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you see it? Do you not see it? Now remember, they haven't even seen any of this. But God is speaking as if it already happened. He's saying, don't you see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness, I will create rivers in a dry wasteland. Yeah, this is huge here. So they're going to be taken away, captive here. But in the midst of it, God speaks redemption. I don't know what you're going through. You may have confusion on your life. You may be suffering physically and need healed. You may feel like you're in a dry, weary place. Maybe you're confused about what God's doing in your life. I want to speak to you right now and says, can you see it? Behold, God is about to do something new. And why this message is so important to me right now as a church is I believe we're on the precipice of a new season. I believe God is taking us in to a significant season that, 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 that is very, going, to be, going to be very significant about the growth of our church. Not just numerically, but spiritually. Not just quantitatively, but qualitatively. God is taking us into maturity where we experience Him, him in a very real way way. So God begins to speak to them. Look, this is going to happen, but remember who I am and remember these things. So, so when we're going to get a new season, when we sense God is up to something, even when I can't see it and I don't know, remember this. It's an invitation to know and to love God well. Yeah, that's what this is really all about. So here we go, back to verse 15, Isaiah 43, 15. Point number one, God says, I got this. I don't know what your this is, but God got it. Maybe you're, uh, maybe you're underemployed, unemployed. Maybe your marriage isn't working out the way you thought it would. Maybe you'd like to be married, and you're not married yet. I don't know what your this is, but God is saying, I got this this. Yeah, that's what he's really saying here. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator and king. We need to go back to who he is. Let's go back to that love relationship with him and remember him. It's he. And so I want you to list out who is God to you. He got this. Is he your creator? Is he your king? Is he your Lord? Come on, who is he to you? The Holy One sets us apart. And we need to begin to review our, our challenges as an opportunity for courage. Remember, every time that we have conflict, whether it's in a relationship here on earth or even a relationship with what my will and God's will, every time we have conflict, it's an invitation of trust. That's right. I don't care if it's brother to brother in, in church or sister to sister, you're having conflict or conflict with what you read in the word. I know this is what God's word says, but that's not what I'm experiencing. So I have conflict. It's an invitation to trust God. He's the creator. He's the Lord. He's the redeemer. And God is in the midst of redeeming something in your life and in my life right now. So God says, verse 
16 now. He says, I've done this before. Not only do I got this, I'm the creator, I'm the Lord, you belong to me. But he says, I've done this before. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. Now what God is saying to, through the prophet Isaiah to God's people is remember what I have done. Yeah, remember when the Israelites, and this is going back to the, to the book of Exodus, when they walked through the, the Red Sea, God opened up the Red Sea, God's people went through and were safe, and then the sea came back over all of, the, all of Egypt's, uh, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were chasing them in chariots and horsemen, and it swallowed them up. And God's saying, remember I got that? I got this too. I've done this before. I know what I'm doing. Come on, I can, I, you got to trust me. God will never leave us nor forsake us. And this is why in all of our lives, we need good memories with God. We need faith memories with God. Why? Because when things get tough, when we find ourselves maybe feeling abandoned, maybe feeling like God's far away, we need something to pull on. We need God's word in this case, but we also need, remember when God met us here? Remember when God did this or you're that? Whatever that may be here. And there's so much more. See, God says, listen, I've done this, man. And God has us. I just started thinking just recently just about our, our church and all that God has done with our church over the last like 42 years, but even since I've been the lead pastor for the last 25 years, and God has shown up miraculously time and time again. But, but God keeps showing up in times of brokenness, in times where I'm not self-sufficient and look how powerful I am. But most of the time when I'm feeling weak, when I'm feeling like I'm at the end of my rope, that's when God shows up. He says, remember, I've done this before. And I just start going back in my memory here, thinking about all the times that God showed himself so faithful, so wonderfully faithful to us as a people and us as a church. God pulled through in miraculous ways. And I have that to pull from. And God's saying, I've done this before. I can do it again. See, this is the new season. This is the new season that, that we have and that we're pulling on here. Bridge City Church, and every time that we have expanded as a church, the multi-site, it hasn't come out of times of strength. Every single time, it's come out of times of weakness, out of times of brokenness. That's what he does. He's a redeemer. And right now in your life, you're experiencing brokenness. Embrace it. God is about to do something. Every time there's conflict, every time you feel broken, every time you feel isolated and lonely, Grab onto this. It's a new season about to happen. But this is where we experience. Remember in, in Psalm 91, I read earlier, God says, listen, I, I'm going to love you in the midst of your trouble, but I'm going to rescue those who love me. So really what's at test, what do I believe about God, is he still has a plan. He got this. I remember what he's done according to his word and his ways and his will in my life, and I experience him. Now, I don't want to relive the past. I want to press on to the future here. But in the midst of it, God says, I'm going to do it again. So I'm not talking about clinging to the past. We're going to get to that in a second. But we're going to boast about God. I want to read this to you. Jeremiah, another major prophet in the Old Testament, chapter 9, verse 23. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom or the powerful boast in their, in their power or the rich in their riches. But those who wish to boast and brag, they should boast in this alone that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord, that word Lord shows up again, who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth. And I delight in those things. God delights in righteousness and justice. I, the Lord, have spoken. See, that's what we need to settle. We need to settle who's speaking. Is this just a friend talking? Is this Pastor Rick talking? Or is this God talking? 
But we need to boast about this. We need to boast about, I know and understand God. And, and, and this is what I understand God. I don't always understand what God's doing, and I don't like his timetable, but I understand that he is God, and he has good thoughts towards me, and his unfailing love will never leave me nor, for, nor forsake me, and he's with me in the midst of everything. So let's boast. Let's brag about knowing God. Everybody loves to brag on themselves. Everybody loves to say, look what I did. Look what I accomplished. Look who I am. No, what we should be bragging on is what God has done, what he continues to do. See, we are in a season in Pittsburgh where we don't care who gets the credit as long as God gets the glory. That's what's going on right now in our city, and I'm so excited about it. I see walls coming down, and I see us uniting for a greater purpose than I've ever seen before, and I'm excited. In just a few weeks, we are going to have our outdoor worship experience. That's right, 10 churches getting together on a Sunday morning, giving up what's the most valuable Sunday mornings to a pastor and saying, I don't even want what I want. I'm willing to serve and be a part of what God's doing in our city. That's not boasting about, look at my church and look how great we are. That is boasting about God. We know him and we understand what he is doing in a great, in an awesome way. This is the season we are in and it's a new season. It's a new day. So, okay, back to Isaiah 43, verse 19. Here's a word for you today, right here. For I am about to do something new. Yeah, see, see, we got to see it with our eyes. But even when I can't see it with my eyes, I got to see it in the spirit. I got to see with my spiritual eyes here. I have already begun. I believe that's a word, even though I can't see it with my natural eyes. I know that God is doing something. He's already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in a dry wasteland. River is a symbol of life. Rivers can also be a symbol of the Holy Spirit. But, but, but in biblical times, you had to be close to water. And actually, you needed running water. You needed, you needed a river to help create purity in the water so it was safe. So rivers are life. I mean, I mean, we know that here in Pittsburgh. We got the three rivers downtown, and we have, we have more bridges crossing more rivers and more creeks and creeks than, than you ever could imagine here. But, but what God is saying is, I'm going to give you a river of life here. It's powerful. It's unstoppable. And it's going to find a way. So there's a river. Now, why was this so significant? Because in between Babylon, the place of confusion, the place of the worldly system, the place of chaos, that's our world, and where God wants us, in this case, it was Israel, there was a big desert. Yeah, a desert. A, a, a horrible wilderness. And so God's saying, even though you can't see it, I'm going to give you a river in the middle of your desert. That's what he gives here. And he says, also, I'm going to make a road, a pathway through the wilderness. I'm going to give you a new way to walk, a new way to go. But it, it has to be a new way, not the old way here. I'm making, so that's what we're doing at Bridge City Church. We're making new ways for people to find God. We're making new ways for people to be restored and redeemed and experience the Creator God. That's what we're doing here. It's a church that has to learn how to walk by faith. That's right. God's taking us back to a faith walk, not self sufficiency, not that we have it all figured out. And, and I keep saying this, I'm gonna, it's probably going to keep oozing out of me. Every time I come to God and say, I ain't got nothing, God says, now you got it. I ain't got nothing. I don't make sure what I'm doing here. God says, now you got it. Yeah, when we say, I ain't got nothing, but God, I want to see your river. I want to see your pathway. I want to see your new season. This is what God's inviting us into in the middle uh, of the chaos, the wilderness, the loneliness, and everything that it goes from here. A long walk between Babylon and Israel here. But God is going to lead us through. And I want to say to you at Bridge City Church, and even to those that are listening on all our different forums here, that this is that God's doing something new. And we got to embrace it. 
God's taking us into a deeper faith, into a deeper realization of who He is, a deeper revelation, not just deeper information here. Yeah, and we're going to do it with Him, not just for Him. This is the new season that we are in. And I am praying for a season of multiplication. A season of multiplication of God's gifts in His people. Yeah, in you and in me. And not only in you and me, but in in the next generation. I'm praying earnestly for the whole next generation. When I say that is, is, listen, when you get to your upper 50s, everybody younger than you is the next generation. But I'm talking about the next couple of generations coming up because we want nothing more than to be a multi-generational church. That's right, multi-generational. But we only have one culture. It's the culture of the kingdom with a new season in a new way. And, 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 and we're remembering what God has done, but we're not getting all wrapped up in that. You see, in the midst of a new season, what we have to realize what God is doing is this. Behold, I do something new. What we do have to do is forget what lies behind. Well, wait a minute. God says remember. No, remember God's miracles to build your faith, but don't cling to those miracles in your here and now. And and, and when God says forget about the past, in, in Philippians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul said, this one thing I do, I forget what lies behind and I press forward. We have to be willing to forget all the good, the bad, and the ugly. I, I know most of us, we just want to forget the bad stuff. And God says, no, you got to forget the good stuff. On our back deck at our home, we have uh, beautiful flowers. And in, in the midst of summer, you, the flowers bloom and then they, they, they start to shrivel up and they die. And what we have to do is, uh, well, when I say we, uh, probably more Natalie than me, but what we do is pull off all the, all the flowers that are kind of dead to allow there to be new growth on those flowers. And yeah, the white flowers beget white flowers and the purple ones beget purple ones. But if we don't remove what's old, there can't be anything new. And I believe what God is doing in your life and in my life and in our church life, even in our city right now, and I, and I believe this is this, is that I believe God is doing something. He, he's, he's, he's wanting us to leave behind even all the good stuff. Our, see, you can't go into your new season looking over your shoulder into, into, the, into the desert and into chaos and confusion. Even the good stuff, even all the things that we have done, they've been so, so good. I'm not clinging to those. I'm using those to build my faith that I'm leaving it all in the past. I'm pulling off those old flowers and, and just throwing them off into the yard. And then I'm, I'm moving on to the new so there can be new growth, new flowers, and that the whole plant can become bigger and there can be more people. And we can see heaven get bigger in hell smaller, but we need a new season to do that. So we got to say, God says, I got this. God says, I've done it before, but God says, I got a new season for you. I have a river. I have a pathway for you. And this is what I want for you. This is what God is speaking to us here. In John chapter seven, verse 37, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from your heart. And I believe that God is, we're going from a trickle, we're going from a little, a little, a little bubbling brook here. Actually, in John chapter 4, uh, when, when Jesus says, I have water that you know not of, to the woman at the well, what he was really saying was, is that was a little, like, a, like a little well. And we get so used to going to the well and getting a little drink. But God says here, Jesus says in, in, in three chapters later, I'm going to take you from a well to a river. That's right, and this is what God is doing right now. He's taking us from a well mentality, pull up the bucket, get a little drink, to a river mentality where he wants us to go somewhere, where life comes out of us, where, where we, we're so used to being life receivers, now God wants you to be a life giver. He wants to contribute. He wants to take everything in you and let there be a river that flows from a spring to a river. This is what God is doing in our time. This is our new season here. 
Yeah, this is what we want to see. So God says, he's going from, I've got this, to I've done it before, to it's like nothing, like I'm going to, I'm going to do something fresh, and I'm going to do something new, new rivers, new roads. He's, he's up to something, but what I believe God's saying is, will you see it? And the only way we can see it is spiritually. So I want to urge you to go back to worship music. Go back to the Word of God. This has been my prayer, wide-eyed wonder. Yeah, I just want to go back to that effortless where we're following God as a joy and it's an adventure. Yeah, that's what it is. It just, it just comes out of us. It flows from us. Just um, a couple days ago, uh, I was in a doctor's office and God just opened up an opportunity for me to communicate to somebody about his love. As a matter of fact, they said, they, they said, there's something different about you. And then as I read my chart, they said, you're a pastor. And I said, yeah. They said, I knew something that was different about you. And I said, well, how are you and God doing? How, how, do you go to a church? Like, do you, do you know God? And they got real solemn. And, and they said, I know I'm not living a lifestyle that's real pleasing to God right now. And I know that like I go to church and I'm living this lifestyle and I'm having trouble because I want to know God, but I know I'm not doing right. And I'm thinking about it, and I'm saying, this is it. You haven't forgot about God, and he hasn't forgotten about you. You're still thinking about him. He's still thinking about you. No matter how far away you feel or no matter how far estranged, God is only one prayer away from experiencing him. Let us boast in this, that we know him and we understand him, and we know that he's a redeeming God. He's a God who wants to reveal himself to us. Let's brag about that. Isaiah 53, 21. I have made Israel for myself, and they will someday honor me before the whole world. This is my prayer for you and me, but more importantly, God's church, his people, plural. God says he has made us for himself. Yeah, for him. Yeah, and he says, I want to use you. This is what he says. I want to, that someday they will honor me before the whole world. That's what he's looking for. And this is my prayer, is that, that we will experience revival. We're going to experience, a, I, I, I'm going to use the word move of God. We're going to experience something so significant. that something so big that only God could get, God could get the credit. That's what I'm praying for. But it goes back to he, we are his people. And this is what I'm praying for our church. But you know what? I'm praying for every church in the city right now. This is what I'm praying for, is that we, have, we would have a, a churches, plural, because no one church can do it. We're not that good. Church is flowing with life, flowing with ways back to God, will, pathways in the wilderness here, contagious, that everybody's regularly experiencing God that people can't wait to get there on Sunday. And there's a waiting. There's literally, when we show up on Sunday, there's, a, there's people lined up outside waiting to get in. Come on, can you see it? This is the kind of church I'm looking for and the revival here, that people are joyfully serving and they're going the extra mile. When they say, I'm up to serve, they don't say, oh yeah, I'm working this Sunday. No, they say, I'm serving and I'm joyful about it here. Where the word of God is preached and people are taking notes and they're pouring over the notes because God is speaking and giving them revelation here. When the first note is played on, for worship, everybody stands up and there's just an eruption of praise and adoration to heaven. That's what I want to see here, where people are generously, sacrificially giving financially. And that's just the norm for everybody here, where the hurting and the hopeless are helped and they're redeemed. And those who are far from God are redeemed and restored and back in right relationship with God. And the, that's what I'm praying for. Not just for my life and your life, but for Jesus' church. A people that would be completely belonging to God. So I want to say to you today, listen, if you feel far away from God, there's a new season. And how we get close to God is we got to take the first step. Do you have a day, a moment, or time where you began a relationship with, with Jesus Christ? God the Father, the creator of the universe, the Holy One, Israel. Yeah, if you didn't, it starts with repentance. If you're in a place of confusion and chaos in a worldly system, in a worldly mindset, simply ask God to forgive you. God, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I want you to be the Lord, the one in charge of our lives, of my life. And you, 
And God, would you take me? And I want to learn to walk in this new river, in this new road. I want to learn what it means to really experience you on a regular, everyday basis. God, that's what I'm looking for, and that's what I want. And if you'll pray that prayer in earnestness and ask Jesus to now be the center of your heart and life, I believe he will restore you, and he's going to bring you into a new season with more fruitfulness and more joy and more life than you ever could imagine. What do I believe about God when I don't know what to believe? I believe that he's a good God, full of unfailing love and mercy and grace. And every conflict is an opportunity for courage. Yeah, and every obstacle is an opportunity to step, is an opportunity for God to step into faith. May you find that this week. That's my prayer for you. Hey, make sure you come back next week. Uh, uh, we'll be uh, streaming live next week. We're going to have a, a live from, from our North Braddock campus, so you won't want to miss that. And Pastor John's going to have an awesome, over-the-top, great word for you. Hey, have a great week.